Success in this surgery, it's absolutely necessary to find that dot, that one millimetre dot, say, but it's not sufficient for a long-term outcome. You see, everyone thinks Parkinson's is a movement disorder. It's a whole brain disorder. Giving it that category as a movement disorder has actually retracted from the major impact of multiple other conditions that occur in Parkinson's, the non-motor things, the dementia, the, the, the depression, the anxiety, all of those things. And the class one evidence says you operate on people when the medications are not maintaining quality of life. The brain has this really unusual thing is that many diseases can be treated by the same target and you can use different targets for the same disease. The subflamic nucleus itself is not primarily affected by the Parkinson's process. It's just sitting there waiting to get the information from the other cells which unfortunately are dying off. But the ability to modify a structure that's not really broken with the DBS enables people to get moving again. So when we do the surgery, we see people with tremor, that's easy to see, stop. Rigidity and impairment of movement of the hand, we often look very closely at that and you see people's hands go boom. And they look at their hand and how they move and that, and that is a tearjerker to this day. So when you see a good clinical response, then the programming starts after that. These impulses are coming out at 130 per second for five to 25 years in these devices and they're just firing away. If it wasn't working for patients, nobody around the world would be doing it now. And it's increasing and it's actually being applied to other things besides Parkinson's. And the great big advancement in programming has been the development of remote programming.